Israel has pulled its troops out of Gaza. The Palestinians are about to elect a new authority to rule over them. Israel and America hope democracy will end the suicide bombings. But Hamas and other groups behind the bombings say the withdrawal proves violence works. Every night, for the next few nights, all the factions are coming out to claim their share in victory, in driving the Israelis out of the Gaza Strip. A guiding principle of the war on terror is that democracy ends terror. Is Gaza going to test that truth? Beersheba prison in the south of Israel. The prisoners in the maximum security wing are Palestinians. Most are in jail for masterminding terror attacks against Israel. We were meeting a leader from the militant organization Hamas. Abbas Assad is serving life for recruiting a suicide bomber who killed 35 Israelis. He said violence was the only reason the Israelis had left Gaza. Before the resistance, we did not have anything. We just uh, suffered as Palestinians, and uh, we were uh, being uh, treated as an economic project for occupation. There are people who say Hamas is a terrorist organization. Does it mean that they're right to say that terrorism is effective? It's 100 percent obvious that it worked. We were told of another prisoner who was about to be released. That's unusual here. Most of these prisoners are serving multiple life sentences. Sami Anan was a foot soldier in Hamas. A driver, he got eight years for smuggling weapons and fighters. He's 34. Do you feel the same anger towards the Israelis and towards the occupation now as you did when you were brought to jail? He said, after all these years in jail, I feel far more animosity and hatred towards the Israelis and towards the occupation than ever before. In the past, it was a hatred towards an almost abstract thing, an occupation of land. But in the last eight years, the Israelis have been occupying me and they've kept me and my body in here. And that makes the hatred worse. You're coming to Gaza and we'll see you then with your family. Yes? Sami's return to Gaza would coincide with the Israelis' departure. In the last five years of Sami's imprisonment, 1,000 Israelis and more than 3,000 Palestinians had been killed in the conflict. We left Israel for Gaza. We wanted to film with the most feared militant group, Hamas, to discover if for Hamas democracy was a threat or an opportunity. We arrived in the Jabalia area of Gaza City, a Hamas stronghold. The Palestinian Authority's control of this area is tenuous. Hamas was parading its strength and claiming credit for the Israeli withdrawal. Their suicide bombs and rocket attacks on Israel have made them heroes to many Palestinians. I went to visit Abu Jaber, a military commander in a Hamas-affiliated group, the al Salahadin Brigades. Though separate from Hamas, Abu Jaber's group receives most of its weapons from Hamas. That's why he has their sticker on his gun. He said, we as Palestinian people, we regret to say that our relationship with the Palestinian Authority is not very good. He says they've brought problems for us and they don't recognize or acknowledge the fact that we're the ones who spend our nights protecting the people, staying out on the borders. Now that the Israelis have left Gaza, are you going to give up your guns? He said, this is the gun I've used to liberate my land. This is the weapon that has protected my family and my borders. You spend so much time with your weapon, you fall in love with it. He said, now maybe we'll have development and farming and change here and I can put it away. Yalla. Yalla. Abu Jaber has a nightly ritual. Before leaving for night patrol, he kisses his mother goodbye in case he never sees her again. We went to northern Gaza, near the border with Israel. From this area, militants sometimes launch homemade missiles against Israeli civilians across the frontier. That night they were running what they called a defensive mission, no rockets. 
Is that Israel over there? That's Israel. Further over there where the lights are. The militants make their own bombs. They were burying them in the road in case of an Israeli incursion. Hello, Ask me to be careful. Don't step on that. No, no. It's not going to explode. I absolutely hate being around so many bombs. It really freaks me out because there's so many accidents and it never makes me feel secure. No matter how experienced the person is, there can always be an accident. Three men in uniform came by. Our fixer explained that they were from the Palestinian Authority. The one with the military uniforms, they are a regular Palestinian army, regular police. Their job is supposed to be to stop militant activity on the border with Israel. But they've come, they've had a slight argument, whatever has happened, they've resolved and the, the military, the proper military have gone away again, leaving the militants to do whatever they want. Once these militants explained they were not firing missiles at Israel, the police left. They have little choice. They are outnumbered and outgunned. I'm just moving away from the bombs, just a little bit of distance. It might not make any difference, but psychologically it feels better. One of the men led us closer to the Israeli frontier. It was less than a mile away. Though Israeli settlers and troops have left Gaza, Israel still controls Gaza's border, sea and airspace. As far as the Palestinians are concerned, they are still under occupation. He said, these are the first line, these two men here, they're the lookout. If the enemy comes, they alert the other troop, they engage and let them know, they try and delay them. He said, these are the cannon fodder, they know if the enemy comes, they're going to be killed. The next day, three rockets were fired into Israel from a position close to here. At dawn, we attended a Hamas gathering. This is a graduation ceremony for militants from Al Qassam, which is the military wing of Hamas. <clears throat> They're going to show us what they've been trained in. <laughs> Dr. Mahmoud Zahar, a senior leader of Hamas in Gaza, was there. Other high-ranking members had gathered to examine the new recruits. The demonstration began with a Quranic blessing. Despite a current ceasefire, Hamas was sending a message. If Israel continues to occupy Palestinian lands, violence will soon return to the region. The militants were using live ammunition, bullets, shells and homemade bombs. I need to go to the hospital. Hamas militants gave me first aid. There were bombs going off all over the place. They were using live ammunition and a wall or something with shrapnel came at me and hit my leg. I have a hole in my leg, but it's not massive. A few stitches should bring it back together again. I'm just grateful it wasn't my eye or something worse, my head. A few days later, we went to the border crossing between Gaza and Israel. We were joining the family of the prisoner we'd met in Beersheba jail. They hadn't seen Sami Anan for eight years since he was jailed for his activities with Hamas. Despite the pullout, Israel will continue to control this border. <laughs> this is it. Here comes Sami. He's finally being released. 
The first tug came from his brother, Abu Muhammad. Next, Sami's youngest son, Asim, got to kiss his father for the first time. Sami phoned his wife to say he was on his way. Hamas had hired a bus to take Sami home. This was a political statement. Hamas was making sure everyone knew one of their heroes was back. The celebrations were a shock for Sami. When he'd been arrested, Hamas was a marginal group. Now they'd become mainstream. Sami's daughter Aya and wife Nisreen were waiting for him inside the house. She said she can't express her happiness, this is the best joy she's ever had. What are you going to do to make sure that Sami never leaves again? She said, I will leave this matter to God, whatever he decides to do, it's his choice. The next morning, we returned to Sami's house. The children were sleepy because late at night, their parents had taken them to the beach.